Hi right, YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my preview for Dexter Season 7. Uh, the show starts one week from tonight. Um, as far as what I'm expecting from the show, I'll kind of just say the show right now is... It feels like it's dangling off a cliff, basically, and it can either, you know, just finally let go or get pulled back up. The first four seasons of the show were just different ranges of fantastic, pretty much. And then the fifth season was a downgrade in quality, but... You know, the stuff that happened in the fifth season was... At least it was about something. It was about Dexter getting over his grief for what happened to Rita. Like, the whole Jordan Chase thing and the Lumen thing all tied into Dexter getting over Rita. That was the point of season five. Last season, they used, like, this religious angle. I don't want to reiterate stuff that I said from the reviews from last time, if anyone watched them. Um, so they used this religious angle, but... The whole season just ultimately felt like this one big, like, you know, filler. Because they... It, nothing really mattered. Like, you could almost honestly skip the entire sixth season of this show. And basically, all you would need to know was that Quinn and Deborah broke up. There's this Lewis guy that's obsessed with Dexter. And the last five seconds of the season. To be honest, the rest of the season, you know... I actually very much enjoyed the first half, everything with most deaf, and I loved the whole... I liked the religious aspect of it early on. Um, but then once, once most deaf died and uh, Brian showed up again, I thought they were going to do the angel and devil on Dexter's shoulder for the rest of the season. Instead, they just had that one Nebraska episode which just torpedoed the entire sixth season. And they did a really shitty job with the villains by just doing like a Fight Club thing. It was just like lazy. It was like, oh, well, what can we do? Let's do Fight Club. And... Um, yeah, so basically the entire sixth season, you know, the show's at a weird place right now because I want to think about, if I was recommending this show, as of right now I would say, no, don't watch it because it's gone downhill. They have, but they do have a chance, so we'll wait for these next couple of seasons, uh, two or left, to basically see if the show can redeem itself, and then basically I will tell someone yes or no, yeah, watch Dexter. The ending of season six gave this show, I think, a shot in the arm, or, you know, neck, basically, if you want to talk about it that way. Um, that the show needs with Deb finding out, because not only does it take the show in a new direction, it creates drama. Which is what this show is. It's a drama. They had a lot of horror elements, you know, last season. And just, um, you know, the show at its heart is a drama. It's not a really a crime show. It's, um, and the whole discussion, the whole stuff with Deb and Dexter has always been the highlight of the show. The incest angle, I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, you know, at least we could say the incest angle might actually further Deb's reason for not turning Dexter in. So at least we can say that about it, I guess. But the whole point is, is that Deb and Dexter discussing who Dexter really is is great drama, or should be great drama. And um, so I'm really looking forward to that kind of stuff. That's what the show, you know, really needs. And um, plus the whole stuff with um, with Lewis this season, it, um, you know, I don't think Lewis is going to be, you know, I think Lewis is going to kind of be like more of like an appetizer. I don't think he's going to be around for all season. I kind of predict he's going to bite it around maybe halfway through or, some, or something like that. Um, but like the whole thing about it is while that's also another problem for Dexter, which is always good, it also ties Lewis in with Batista's sister because he was dating her, if anyone remembers that, which can also tie Batista in to something. And that's another great thing about, um, or one of the things I'm looking forward to. From the preview, it seems that La Guerta finds the blood slide at the church. And, um, you know, I, I can't fucking stomach LaGuardia, but, like, if she reopens the Bay Harbor Butcher case, then she has something to do. And that was one of the problems that the show's had the past couple of years. The side characters, they've given them just bullshit things to do. Just been like, oh, we have to do something with them, so, you know, here. Uh, like, let's make Quinn, you know, a drinker and an idiot for a whole season. Let LaGuardia and Batista get married and divorced and, you know, all that kind of stuff. This... Her looking for the Bay Harbor Butcher again, um, involving, you know, maybe some of the other characters with it, and um, obviously investigating, you know, the big bad of the season and all that stuff, like, giving char these characters stuff to do 
is one of the things the show's been missing, and it looks like they're going to rectify that. Thank God. Yeah, that's the idea, that they will not be forcing things. And if they do this stuff, then they don't have to force it. They can just let it, you know, let it play out and have these things have actual consequences for Dexter, you know, which is why we watched the damn show. Another reason I'm really excited is because the big bad of the season, the big villain, um, well, it seems it's going to be like a Ukraine, Ukrainian mob thing. Uh, but the main bad guy is played by Ray Stevenson, and um, I, I think he's the main bad guy. He was awesome on Rome. Anyone that was on Rome should be on every show pretty much any time. He played Titus Pullo on Rome. Um, I can't wait to see what he does with the character. He can be extremely menacing. And also, my favorite thing about it is, I said this before, how about someone that can kick the shit out of Dexter? You know? Someone that can match with him, you know, match wits with him and beat the shit out of him. Dexter hasn't really faced that since maybe Dokes, almost. And even Dokes wasn't really good enough. At least this guy is just, you know, brute strength, hopefully. So that'll be nice. The other thing, the fact that it's a mob will mean that Dexter will get a lot of, you know, maybe kills this season. Which basically, you know, that's one of the things we love about the show too. When he gets like his kill of the week that ties into whatever the episode is about and everything like that. Now with the whole mob, he's got a whole army of guys to kill the whole season. And they didn't do that much last season past, uh, I think around like episode three. Like remember they did the whole high school thing and the whole, he killed the, the, the guy Sweeney Todd style in the barbershop and the Tooth Fairy guy, then they kind of just drop that stuff. So I hope that when they get back to that too this, this season, which I think they're going to. Now I know this entire thing can really go tits up, basically, but with two seasons to go, and with them already pulling the trigger on the dead thing, I think, you know, this show's got the a real chance at rebounding. And plus, stakes are going to be higher through, um, you know, when we get to the end of the season, because now... This is the penultimate season of the show. So that means characters like Batista, LaGuerta, Quinn, Masuka, you know, not Deborah Dexter, but those other characters, you know, they're fair game by the end of the season. We could lose one of them. Um, next season, all bets are off. But, um, yeah, like, that adds something to it, and the show needs that. The show, you know, people forget the show really has never been afraid about wiping people out. I mean, between Rita and Dokes and all that stuff... You know, in Lundy and everything like that. So I'm looking forward to all of that stuff for this season. And, um, yeah, let me know what you thought. I know this isn't a very good slice, but that's because I did it. Dexter didn't do it. Catch up to it, anyway. Um, now, there's one thing I want to do. Um, it's a little spoiler thing I wanted to say. Um, also, I wanted to say I love my girlfriend, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. But also, um... There's a little spoiler thing. I found out, mistakenly, the s title of the season finale of this season. Um, so shut this off right now. I'll see you guys next week for the premiere and everything like that. Shut this off if you do not want to know uh, what the finale's episode title is. Shut it. Okay. The episode of the season finale this year is called Surprise Motherfucker, which, first of all, is amazing. Second of all, it's obviously... You know, harkens back to Doke's line from season one. One of the best moments of the show. And um, it looks like Doke's is going to bite him in the ass. Which gives me even more hope to know that something's going to happen that leads us into this final season. And the show is going to continue through these final, I guess, 24 episodes to, you know, really push towards something different. Really push toward a conclusion. And uh, if that can happen, then, uh, then we'll have, a, you know, a good eight season show uh that had you know a misstep in the middle but a misstep in the middle is worth it if they you know if they can um stick the landing which i hope they can all right later guys